G'day guys and gal, it's no secret that racism is a bit of a prevalent thing in Warhammer 40k. No, I don't mean petty interspecies beef because someone has a lighter or darker pigment. I mean that there is a number of different races in 40k, races that have war crimed each other's tits off numerous times. Most people hold nothing but loathing for members of the other races. The Eldar see mankind as primitive and unworthy of the galaxy. The Necrons see the Elder as a bunch of uppity spoiled brats. Everyone sees the Orcs as a massive pain in the ass. However, there is an exception to every rule. The God Emperor of Mankind, arguably the most powerful entity in the entire setting of 40k, goes against the grain. The opinions of mankind that the other races hold don't necessarily apply to him as he is just so far beyond the bounds of a mortal man. But what exactly are the opinions of him that the Xenos hold? Today we'll go over what each of the Xeno races think of the God Emperor of Mankind. I'll also include Chaos because why not? Yep, pretty straightforward. Uh, let's get into it. Starting us off with the Elder, as they are my army of choice, and if I keep manifesting that, one day I'll get a big titty Elder girlfriend. The Elder view pretty much all of mankind with disdain, an overzealous, short-lived bunch of primates with hard-ons for war. They even see the Astartes and Primarchs as inferior, despite them really having nothing that could take down a Primarch in a 1v1. I mean, they do have Margan Rath, so maybe not. However, for the Emperor, they have a different opinion entirely, especially for the ones that have been exposed to his girth. During the War of the Beast, a bunch of harlequins broke into the Imperial Palace to try to tell the Emperor to do a better job against Chaos. It was pretty retarded. They started killing custodies and dying in turn until they were captured. However, one part of it which was cool is their reaction to the Emperor's psychic might. As all Elder, apart from the Dark Elder, are psychic to some degree, they were all punched in the dick by the Emperor's radiant might. Their Shadow Seer described the Emperor as this titanic crushing presence, blinding her with its brilliance. She was so overwhelmed by the Emperor's power that she stopped seeing humanity as inferior if they could produce a being such as this. She goes on to think that the Emperor is way scarier than even Slanesh, the Chaos God who has been raping the Eldar's souls for 10,000 years. Eldrad, one of the Elder's greatest heroes and leaders, was actually mates with the Emperor before he became a vegetabilized lithium iron battery. They had a mutual respect and even worked together to defeat the Cabal and get Vulcan to Terra during the final days of the Horus Heresy. The Emperor held no ill will towards the Elder, merely seeing their mistake and fall as an important lesson for humanity, whilst the Elder, or at least the non-retarded Elder, understood that the Emperor's vision for humanity is the only vision in which the Elder race also survives. So overall, whilst most Elder look down on humanity, they view the Emperor with respect, awe, or fear, seeing him as an equal or even superior to them. Speaking of the Cabal, they too had opinions of the Emperor. For those that don't know, the Cabal were a collection of extremely powerful and advanced Xenos from various races across the galaxy that were really good at seeing the future. They could also create demi perpetuals which are immortal people who can regenerate from nearly any injury, and they could see the future in great detail. They actually foresaw the Horus Heresy years before it occurred, and tried to manipulate its outcome by turning the Alpha Lige into the traitor's side. They had two futures. One was that the Imperium won the Heresy but would be doomed to 10,000 years of decay, in which the entire galaxy would suffer before everything was lost, or option two, the traitors win, burn themselves out within a few centuries, dooming mankind but allowing the rest of the galaxy to flourish. As such, the Cabal, despite being opposed to Chaos, wanted Chaos to win. Although they did oppose the Emperor by unfortunate technicality, the Cabal actually respected the fuck out of him, saying that he was the only human that they would ever allow to join their inner circle. For context, their inner circle had Slan, aka the direct servants of the Old Ones, as well as Elite Elder, so that was a big compliment. What about the Orcs? How do they view the Big E? The Orcs have only ever heard of the Emperor through their time battling the Imperium. Every Orc is familiar with the war cry, FOR THE EMPEROR, as well as how zealous the Emperor's warriors are. So to them, the Emperor is this warrior god, like Gork and Mork. The first Orc who was inspired to start building Gargants was actually inspired because of the Emperor. On a battlefield, he saw a massive Imperial Titan fucking shit up, and thought, Gee whiz, that looks like the Emperor these Umis keep talking about. Then he thought if he could create war machines just as big, Gork and Mork could inhabit them and gang up on the Emperor and crump him. Obviously, the Titan wasn't the Emperor, however, it shows that whenever the Orcs see an awesome weapon of war that the Imperium employs, they automatically assume it is some aspect of the Emperor, which shows that they respect the Emperor as a war beast. 
they're actually confused that humans don't just spend all their time fighting and warring like they do. They think the Emperor is a bit of a retard war god, as he gets his people to invest time and effort into non-war related things. To the Orcs, these things are all a waste. During the War of the Beast, when the Orcs were actually scary for once, their Orc leader begrudgingly respected the Emperor and how hard he had sodomized them during the Great Crusade. However, they were seeking vengeance and destruction against him. When the Beast is fighting Vulcan, he repeatedly refers to him as the son of the Emperor. Overall, to the Orcs, the Emperor is a war god who provides them with endless entertainment in the form of good old fashioned warfare. They believe he is pretty much in a constant punch on with Gork and Mork. The Tau's naivety extends to their perception of the Emperor, although in recent times they have a much clearer of the Imperium and how it works, which is kinda sad because we don't get as many naive Tau scenes anymore. However, when the Imperium and the Tau first made contact, the Tau thought that the Imperium was this small or medium empire and that the Emperor was just an Astartes captain. They thought he he was the king of all space marines. Once they killed the captain, they were like, holy fucking shit guys, we did it. Wow, victory is ours. I assume that's exactly how they sound, before they then got curb stomped by the other space marine companies. Since then, they have incorporated billions of humans into their empire, with many of those humans still maintaining their belief in the emperor as a god. The Tau actually allow them to keep their faith, as long as they ditch the whole xenophobia side of things. They do find it all a bit morbid though, the concept of worshipping a corpse on a life support system system that is eternally suffering. As the Tau don't really use the warp at all, they also don't see the Astronomicon, which is the Emperor's greatest flex, hence they don't quite understand the scale and power of the God Emperor. To them, he is more of a metaphor or ancient legend, rather than the literal glue holding the galaxy together. I really, really want Gilliman to meet the Tau, and for them to be like, alright guys, this is the Emperor. Nothing gets me stiffer than in-law moments of Tau naivety that bites them in the ass. The Necrons don't really give a shit about the Emperor. As they're such an ancient race, have no souls, and literally witnessed and took part in the war in heaven, aka a war where gods walk the battlefield, the idea of a god emperor isn't particularly new or impressive to them. Once again, they don't really use the warp either, so they have very little appreciation for his power. They see him in the same category as the Chaos Gods, just these uppity warp slut old one wannabes that they will eventually overcome. Trezin actually mused on the Emperor once, saying that he could do a much better job with preserving and restoring the Corpse Emperor than the Imperials, and that the Emperor would make a fine addition to his collection. Funnily enough, the Emperor actually utilized a fair bit of Necron tech for his special projects, and he was very aware of them. For example, he imprisoned the Void Dragon, aka a Necron Catan Shard. There was also a special anvil that he used to craft special weapons for the Primarchs. The anvil was implied to be of Necron origin. The Kalidus Assassin Temple also uses Catan Phase Swords, which are Necron weapons, as well as various other things. If the Necrons were aware of his ability to adapt their technology or knock their own gods on their asses, I expect they would view him with a bit more respect or wariness. But for now, he's just another temporary roadblock on their path to galactic domination. It's Kinda hard to figure out what the Tyranids think about shit, as all they do is eat everyone. The hive mind is definitely intelligent, knowing to avoid Necron tomb worlds and make other considered decisions, but it doesn't really have inner monologues that we're allowed to read. They would certainly be aware of the Emperor and his power. After all, the Astronomicon is like a beacon to them, but they wouldn't really care about the more sentimental parts of the Emperor. They probably just desire to consume him and evolve using his supreme DNA. Imagine if a Nid gets to take a bite out of Gilliman, could use his DNA to make the Swarm Lord actually scary. Then imagine if they got some Emperor DNA, oh my lord, that would be spicy. But yeah, as we don't get to have nuanced Tyranid novels where we get to see Hive Tyrants having deep conversations with their Gaunts, it's hard to know their actual opinions. Although Chaos isn't necessarily a Xenos race, we may as well include them here as well. Chaos obviously despises the Emperor, but for different reasons. The Chaos Gods and their demons hate the Emperor, calling him the Anathema, because he party pooped their plans for galactic domination. They don't see him as this weak fool or deceiver like many of the traitor Astartes do. They see him as a massive threat, someone who threatens the great game and makes it a lot less fun than it used to be. This contrasts heavily with the traitor or Chaos Marines, who mock the Emperor as a weak fool a false corpse god. This is because when the Traitor Legions originally turned their back on the Imperium, it wasn't because they wanted to suck on Daemonette titties. They did it because they were told that the Emperor had abandoned them and planned to ascend to godhood. Then when he would do that, he would cull the Astartes and replace them with weak worshippers instead. As such, to them, he was a lying hypocrite who betrayed them. The Gods of Chaos are happy to maintain this lie, as it's a better motivator for their legions, rather than, we lied to you about the Emperor. <laughs> 
rather than, we lied to you about the emperor to trick you into selling your souls to us, but you have to keep hating him, otherwise we'll turn your dicks into cow spawn, then force you to suicide via your own corrupted cocks. It's all about marketing guys and gal. It is very interesting to see the contrast in opinions between actual chaos who know the truth of the emperor, as well as the servants of chaos who just happily accept whatever bullshit they are drip fed, as long as it fits their own desired narrative. Hmm, that seems familiar. If you enjoy the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, where there is not only a bunch of nude cosplay shots, but also a boatload of Battle Mace 40 million hentai. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more Emperor Bless content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.